Hi, how are you? I hope you're having a good day. So, thanks for stopping by again. Today, I am going to be just 10 meant to be. When I picked this novel, I think I just liked the storyline. I'm not sure, but the thing is, most of my novel selections come from BookBub. Like, I receive recommendations every day, like every single day. And at the end of the week, I receive top 10 choices. So, I have to make the choice of book I want to read from all those options. So I'm not exactly sure what meant what pushed me to pick this one, but I know it's just like interesting book blobs, like maybe when they write things like, oh this man went to this place but then he was missing and this happened. So maybe sometimes funny enough is really the basic storylines that attract me. But maybe the basic storyline is told in a way that is not too basic, that is relatable. So I think maybe that was what got me about this particular story. Okay, so this one is meant to be. I'm just going to like start talking and then, yeah, so you're with me on this. Anyhow, it starts with Joe. Joe is our lead guy. So he was born in December 1963. By the time you hear 1963, you already get, have an idea of the setting of the story. So his mom had him after three miscarriages. So uncle already had that pressure when he was born low key. Okay, he's a miracle child on one hand, but on another hand, he's like, oh my goodness. Oh, I had you after three miscarriages. You got a chosen one kind of thing. Like I'm just being a little dramatic here, but moving on. So he was named Joseph S. Kensley the third after his father and grandfather. So... Do you see his name too? It's not Joseph the one or Joseph the second. He is Joseph the third. He was born into privilege and wealth that started with his great grandfather that was friends with one president like that. President of America because this was since he sat in America. So he, he was an only child. So after him, his mother did not have any other child. And then unfortunately, when he was three years old, his father, Joseph the second, died in his astronaut's pursuits. So from a young age, Joe had memories of his dad. And then he loved when people talked about his dad too. Because of how outstanding Joe's dad was, people had expectations that Joe's dad, if he had lived, would have become the 37th president of the United States. Yes, the family are like that kind of political family. You know, when you're talking about the Roosevelt, you're talking about the Clintons, you're talking about who else right now? So the Kennedys, and I'll try to the inspiration for this story, uh, according to the author. But we'll talk about that on the next episode. So, so anyhow, this guy's dad was, people thought he was going to be the third seven president of the United States. And when that failed, that dream they had, they pinned their hopes and dreams on a three-year-old. Like, okay, Joe, the third, when you grew up, you now become that thing your father could not be because he died early. You get that sort of thing. So to make matters worse, his mom often compared him to his late dad, especially whenever he got into any kind of trouble at school. She loves to quote the verse of the Bible that says, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required. You know that verse now. So if you, if you have plenty of talent, we expect that you should do plenty of good. If you have less talent, we expect that you should not do all that good. Honestly, this kind of generally puts a lot of pressure on people with talent, don't you think? But anyhow, Sha. So as a Kinsley, Joe had, because his name, he's, a, he's Joe Kinsley, yeah? So Joe Kinsley, as a Kinsley, you know, that kind of family, that kind of accolades. He had access to the best private schools, private clubs, private bankers, private planes. You know, they're trending on private. So he was grateful, personally, for all the blessings in his life. But he just had one desire, to be his own man. Fortunately, his dad's mom, Gary, the reason why she's called Gary was actually because when Joe was small, he couldn't pronounce granny. So he was calling her Gary. So it kind of became a thing for them. So even as a full grown man, he kept calling her Gary. So you get that. So it really created a bond between them. And fortunately, his dad's mom, Gary, she understood Joe well and she allowed him to be exactly who he wanted to be. He loved to spend time with her whenever he could. She taught him how to be considerate of others 
and pointed out how he was a natural leader. You know, as a small boy, he, he, he did not have sense. Most people shall when we are small. So you kind of need that loving hand of someone you respect, but you also know that they love you and mean well for you. They're not out to pressurize you to be someone else. And then they're guiding you. And maybe like, for instance, he had this classmate then that was a, a little bit of a sissy, you know, that those kind of guys that have all these female attributes going. So all the other guys were picking on him for not being manly enough. So it was actually Job that it didn't quite sit right with him. Obviously, he knew that this guy wasn't as manly as them, but he didn't feel like it was something to pick on the guy for. So he was actually the one who just defended, you know, he just befriended the guy, not like defended really. And just by him befriending the guy, the bullying stopped. Like the, the other guy just stopped bullying, like look at natural leader. So it was actually his grandmother who points now these things. And he found himself becoming a better human being because of her. So unlike his dad, you know, Joe's dad, the one who died, was actually really good at school, but Joe wasn't. But he took after his dad in other ways, Sha. I mean, he had charisma, he had good looks, and he had this insatiable appetite for danger and adventure. So his mom, Doty, was always scared that Joe might get hurt because there was something known as a Kingsley curse that persisted for about half a decade where a member of the Kingsley family died annually. Like, every single year. After Joe's father died, the next day, a three-year-old cousin died. The next year, another cousin died in the twenties. And that year, I think another aunt. You get that kind of thing. But these cousins are used to have sense. It will not still stop them from taking stupid, dangerous um, risk. So, in high school, Joe met Barry. So, Barry was this orphan girl who got transferred to his school. And then, somehow, Joe just took her under his wings. So, here yeah, his mom... Her, um, Barry and his um Joe's mom. Joe's mom's name is Doty. So Barry and Doty became confidants and inseparable. And all the other members of the Kingsley family somehow just saw Barry too as their own. So she became the sister that Joe never had and a daughter to his mom. So Barry really shook some sense into Joe. And she actually was the reason he started taking less risk. Because whereas others would call him reckless whenever he took risk, Barry would call him arrogant and selfish because, according to her logic, if anything were to happen to him, his mom would be all alone. She was the only person who dared to point out to Joe that it was actually his dad's adventures. Where, you know that dad, everybody's like, oh my God, your dad is so heroic. Could have been the third, seventh president of America, blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody idolized the dad, but it's the only Barry that was like, see you, your father. It was actually his his insatiable taste for adventure that got him killed. He was not supposed to be in that space program. He was he begged your mother that it was his that let, let her give him one chance, and it was that one chance that killed him. That's the thing. So, it, for him for her to call out that brutal truth, it really helped Joe calm down, like take less risk and all of that. Meanwhile, Kate lost her dad. Kate now is our female lead. So we're now jumping to her story, her background a bit, so that you can see what's going on with her. So Kate lost her dad to a car accident when she was three years old. So that's similar to Joe who lost his dad when he was three too. So like Joe, she did not have anything to remember him by. Her father wasn't a hero or anything. So no one really talked about him. All she had was a black and white photograph. Her mom would talk about him. Her grandma won't talk about him. And they only live with her grandma for a short time. The lady wasn't so nice to them. So the thing now left little Kate she had to make up stories in her head about the kind of man her father was. So her and her mom moved into a tiny apartment eventually. Her mom now worked as a waitress. Her mom was this young and beautiful mother compared to like some other moms you see now. Her mom was like, mm, you know, sell and say kind of women. And the woman believed that money and men were perquisites to happiness. Even as Kate was small, she didn't understand this because she knew they were poor. But she also knew she was happy. So how did the money and the men now bring the happiness when she's already happy? This was her small girl logical. So soon her mother started looking for a new husband. And because of that, the woman started bringing a lot of men around Kate. And Kate didn't like a lot of them. So the only man her mom brought home that Kate liked was Chip. He was a police officer. And she liked him because he gave her a doll, this beautiful doll as a gift. Whereas the other men, would, they, would, they would buy her cheap candies. But this man bought this very adorable, expensive-looking doll. It was like nothing Kate ever had. So the thing kind of endeared her to the man. Or rather, endeared the man to her, exactly. But And the man eventually became her stepfather. He married the mother and Kate hated him because he turned out to be an abuser. Like he beat her mother physically. 
while he would abuse Kate verbally, telling her she would never amount to anything. So because of this thing, Kate went through severe low self-esteem and she was ashamed of her classmates discovering the truth about her family. It's true they moved into a fine house like the mother wanted, fine neighborhood, she went to fine school but she was facing abuse. So in real life, Kate didn't like boys, like she was always like, I don't like boys, no, 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 but she had celebrity crushes and Joe, like, you know, Joe Kensley was the biggest of them all. So from when she was small, she actually had a crush on him. He was a few years older than her and his entire family life was public. Remember, he's like this American political figure, you know, they're like this American royalty kind of thing going on. So her mom liked to devour the tabloids about the Kinsley. So by association, Kate knew practically everything there was to know about Joe and his family. As a young girl, Kate used to pretend that Joe was her boyfriend. And then he gave her the shark's tooth necklace around his neck that she saw him wearing in one magazine like that. So Kate used to be unpopular in school. Like nobody knew her because at first she was taller than the boys in her class in her puberty phase and she looked awkward. But then, you know, that kind of summer before high school and this fine, this girl goes on, undergoes this transformation. And then, so what really helped that was that during the, that summer holidays, you know, the three months or so, you know, it, it, it goes on for, she practiced good posture, how to do her makeup, how to style her hair. She bought new clothes and she got tan and blonder. So popular boys asked her out all the time. And then when they find, when they find was like the eat girl, like that cheerleader, um, head of cheerleading squad kind of person, that girl became Kate's best friend. Obviously now, pretty girls like pretty girls. They flock together like, oh my God, my friend is so pretty, just like me kind of attitude going on. So yeah. When these parents were well to do, no, cheerleader, head cheerleader, no money, no parents used to get money. And her dad treated her mom like a queen. So Kate hung out at Wendy's house often, which was like to her being at a nice hotel. Kate never told Wendy about the situation of her family because she didn't want Wendy to pity her. As an insurance policy against any form of rejection, Kate pretended that nothing bothered her. And she made it a rule not to like boys. She followed up in her action because, you know, this time she's already older. By the time she, when she was crushing on Joe, she was like between 10 to 12 but right now, when she's like about to like 14, 15, high school age, she was like, I can't like boys. Boys are useless. And all this teenage face thing. And, you know, based on her, what's going on at home. So what she did was that she took down all the pictures of Joe Kingsley shot in her room. So she forced herself to stop crushing on him, stop following up on news about him. Not because of him, Sha, but just generally boys. She didn't want to have to, anything to do with them. And then instead, what she put on her walls were fo- um, cut out photos from Vogue, Elle and Harper's Bazaar magazines. So those are pictures of models, like pictures of women doing big things. And she found it inspiring. She wanted to be like them. So on one of Kate's trips with Wendy to her parents' condo in Margate, you know, when these parents have money now, so they have like vacation houses and stuff. So one and Kate used to follow, like she used to spend a lot of time at Wendy's house so that she can get away from her house. She spends a lot of time with Wendy. Wendy does never ask why Sha because obviously now she likes Kate. Kate to know how to carry herself and everything. So on one of those trips, so Kate was scouted by this Barbara Bell, who's a talent scout for an elite modeling agency. So Kate managed to ask her stepfather's permission that trip to because she she asked because at this time she was 16, she, so she had to ask his permission to so that she could give modeling a try. And surprisingly, he agreed. But it was actually because he saw dollar signs like if this girl starts making money here, I can collect money because you know, modeling that sort of thing. So modeling was tough, but Kate really pressed on because she saw it as a ticket to independence and to get her her mom out of Chip's control. So for Kate now, she now really took modeling as her all in all. And the thing really led her not to finish high school because she had to be out of town often, working, making money. And lucky she was actually avoiding the house. So she, the thing made her, she didn't now finish high school. So over the years, Chip actually had gotten worse and and worse before that time. That was really one of the reasons why she was hustling so hard to get out of there. He got jealous too often, including the spice and the attention that Kate's mom, his wife, gave Kate his stepdaughter. He didn't like whenever his wife's attention shifted from him. And then he got extremely violent and hurt his wife. 
He often rushed out to the emergency room and then he would blame the injuries on her falls, in quotes. And she would agree with him. Victims of abuse there. Ah! As for Joel, he got into Harvard because of his name, not his grades, because the guy really wasn't good at school. And eventually he met and started dating Margaret. Margaret was Barry. That Barry that's like a sister to him, her favorite sweet mate. And Margaret was like him in terms of class, in terms of her family has money, she's a trust fund baby, and her mom, and his mom, Dottie, Joe's mom, really approved of the girl too. So in college, Joe tried out a number of things, including acting, but he didn't quite know what he wanted to do. He finally decided to go to law school, and his mom loved the news, like, yes, finally. You know, everybody knows that going to law school and stuff like that really helps political careers. It's like one path most politicians, many politicians take. I mean, Barack Obama, Q. So, however, he took the LSAT exams three times before he passed. And the media carried this news to Joe's embarrassment. Uncle did not write exam once and pass. He wrote it three times. So... After they graduated from college, the Margaret girl he was dating, they reluctantly broke up because she needed, she joined the peace cause to teach English in Malawi. You know, all those kind of classy girls who were still going to charity work and everything. Okay. So the years that followed, Joe dated actresses and models and frequented nightclubs. So it was after Joe passed the bar exams and he took a job as the assistant district attorney, DA, in Manhattan, that he calmed down his wild ways. Besides, everybody knew that the DA's, DA's office was a great part to go into politics. Remember, lawyer politics easy so fortunately for joe he enjoyed working as he actually enjoyed working that assistant da job he loved interacting with cops witnesses and victims building a case and preparing for trial court appearances reminded him of theater because he did that briefly in college and he loved to put on a good performance however joe knew that he had an advantage over other thornies because the jurors and judges knew his father, that his late father still had influence how many years later, nearly 30 years later. And then they they respected his father and they trusted Joe by extension. Oh, he's a son of, he's Joe Kinsley, they thought. His dad, the second, was so-and-so person. I mean, the son is, of course, is fallen in that path, so we believe in him. So that influence, too, was helping his court cases very well. Anyhow, so Ga- Gary, his grandma, his his late dad's mom, often came to some of his court hearings and they would have lunch afterwards. She often asked him questions and made him reason things in a way that he never really had before she said it. And it taught him a lot. So meanwhile, Margaret came back into the picture. They started going out again. So one day his mom cornered him and asked when he intended to marry Margaret. Due to pressure from his mom and the subtle hints from Margaret, Joe prepared to propose. But first, he went for a weekend to the Hamptons and there he met Kate. So Joe and Kate finally meet. After many years, Kate was has she's she has now become a successful model. She left Chip's house when she turned 18. And it was thanks to a model friend of hers, Elena, who was like a sister to her. Elena went through much worse than Kate did at the hands of her own stepfather, including sexual abuse and an illegal abortion. Her mom kicked her out when Elena came up front and told her own mother, see, see, see what your husband is doing to me or did to me. And your mother is like, you're trying to ruin my marriage. Get out of my house. And your mother tricked out. But well, fortunately, after Ella suffered for Elna, suffered for some time, she was discovered and she became a model. Elna was the one who convinced Kate to stop thinking she had to protect her mother. Because at the point, Kate was just so caught up in that cycle. Like, oh my goodness, my mom is suffering at Chip's hand. I have to get her out. I have to get her out no matter what. At the point, she was even paying Chip not to touch her mother. Like, paying Chip money. Imagine. And her own mother. It's not like... She did not have enough money to bring her mother out of there and they would have lived a fairly comfortable life. But the mother does not want to come out. She's like, I can calm him down. I can smooth him things over. This is the mother you want to keep defending. And this is the man that told you not amount to anything. He's the reason why I did not graduate from high school. And auntie, and your mother too is party to it by not doing anything. And that's woman you are still trying to protect. I vex for her. Hmm? But it was now like, Elna that really said all these things that we are thinking to her that I'm thinking I was like you victim to Kate and she's your mother I'm sorry she's suffering but how to protect yourself if she, if she won't protect you so get out of that house every woman for herself fortunately Kate listened 
So Kate stayed in touch with Wendy, you know, the Wendy find the and the Chelly that girl who and Wendy, you know, she went that part, went to college, married a wealthy man like her father, you know, settled down into a role of wealthy housewife and mom. So and when but Wendy was so they said in torture, her and Kate, but Wendy was this kind of fair weather friend and she only showed up for fashion week, high end parties. But she had no idea how grueling and difficult being a model was. The starvation diets made them too thin. And honestly, there was no model without an eating disorder. It was more of a question of degree and method. As for Kate, she smoked a pack of nicotine a day to help keep hunger at bay. Her and Elna actually agreed that they were never going to do hard drugs. And they didn't. So that was a good thing. But, you know... This model lifestyle stuff. So Kate still didn't trust guys. And she noticed that many of them were intimidated by her. They would seem confident. They would talk up this big game. But let her just do one photo shoot. That she just posed like, ooh, ah, skin shoot. They would break up. Because they'd be like, ah, that they cannot deal with. So on the weekend that her path crossed with Joe, it was the year 1995. And she was at the Hamptons for a photo shoot. She was actually walking. Because the Hamptons is like this place for the Uber Ridge and the the Kinsleys had a house there. So Joe came down there for the weekend to think before he would you know to think if he wanted to really propose to Margaret and all that. So that was how they met. So Joe was out with his dog um Thursday. He saw the Kate's um campaign, the photo shoot campaign and he just wanted to like find a way to talk to her. So he threw a frisbee. The um the frisbee like um Thursday's frisbee Thursday's his dog, Kate's way. So his dog went over there. He now he's the opportunity to talk with her. And it's this kind of thing that he was just gonna have I was like, I know you, I know you then I was like, Oh my god, I recognize it from this billboard. Isn't she that Santo? Ah, uh, trust Kate now. And to pretend that she did not know him. Oh you see Nearly everybody knows Joe Kinsley, but she just she was just cool about it. It's not like she was all like, I don't know you thing, but she just she was just all cool, like, mm-hmm, like a regular person I'm talking to. Not like, I, I, she didn't do the whole, I had a crush on you sometime, and oh my goodness, it's so good to see you. She was just all cool and stuff. So, although Joe was with Margaret at the time he met Kate, that time, and he wasn't the type to cheat, actually, Joe is not a cheater, he just panicked. He just found himself panicking at the thought of never seeing Kate again. And he wanted to have a platonic relationship with her at the very least. Love at first sight hit him, and it amazed him because how can you love someone that you don't know? So he asked for her phone number, and she gave him a little smile, shrugged, and said, sure, why not? She never expected him to call. The next day, Barry arrived at the Hamptons to meet Joe, and she was mad at Joe when he fa- when she found out that he collected the model's phone number because remember he had that models and actresses stunt face. So she now it was so Barry was just assuming ah this Kate so long as she's a model. In fact, I don't care who she is, Seth. Yeah, with Margaret and she's a model, and this other girl is a model, and Margaret is not a model, and she's educated, Harvard older. What are you looking for again? Don't even call that girl just forget about it so he actually took self like strong like sheer self-control for Joe not to call Kate but a month later Margaret found the phone number in his wallet by accident he created a scenario that led them to break up but the real reason that Margaret left him was because he didn't know himself he actually didn't know what he wanted so Joe knew he could have ha- he could have bought a diamond ring the day after Margaret broke up with him and proposed to her and she would take him back but he didn't want her his mom was quite upset with him a year later, Margaret got engaged to someone else and Joe felt bitter because nothing about his own life had changed. He was happy for how? I mean, as happy as anyone can be for an ex they didn't want to marry but loved. I mean. So meanwhile, when Joe didn't call like Kate expected, she stalked magazine articles a few weeks later and found the ones where Joe and Margaret, oh, they were sailing, they were skiing, they were indulging all this, you know, rich people activities. So, she wasn't jealous of Margaret's style. I mean, the girl didn't have style compared to Kate's, come on. But Kate was jealous of Margaret's, you know, the fact this girl went to school. She's a graduate of Harvard. She has all these credentials and she didn't, and Kate didn't have any of those things. That was really what got to her. Eventually, Kate left modeling. And she started working for designer Wilbur Swift. He was an upcoming designer. He was well known in the preppy world. So the thing really helped her accolades too. She started, you know, building reputation, not as a model, but as a stylist. And she felt more respected and valued in that role. 
she was really good at what she did. She gave um, clients this transformative experience and they really loved her for it. Six months into her new job, Wilbur brought Joe Kinsley up when they were coming back from the strip and asked why Kate didn't mention that she knew the most famous man in the world. Apparently, Wilbur met Joe at a party and Joe mentioned that he knew her. In fact, Joe knew that Wilbur and Kate walked together. So, see, our guy was keeping tabs on Kate, but Kate didn't know. So, so Joe knew that Wilbur and Kate walked together and Joe actually thought, okay, maybe, maybe this is a good time to pop back into her life. I don't know what's going on with him anyway. It's been a year. But, so, just happened, because he happened to run into this Wilbur Swift guy, he was like, okay, you know what? I'm coming in tomorrow for an appointment. So at the time, Kate was dating the soccer player. So when Joe came in for the appointment and dazzled everybody, but obviously not Kate, she just told him, oh, I'm seeing someone. So he tried to explain, he just let that one aside because he just saw it as, the way she said I'm seeing someone and all that, he, he thought two things. She was either lying or she actually didn't take this person she's dating seriously, which means anyhow, I can see shoot my shots. That's how he saw it. So he tried to explain to her why he didn't call her, but she waved him off. Like, don't don't worry about it. I'm cool. Joe didn't give up easily. He asked for her number again, but she asked him to give her his that she would call. Well, let's see what she did. Joe went all out to prove he was interested in her. Like, he went all out. He sent flowers with cheesy poetry. Kate still didn't trust them because, oh my goodness, you're too handsome. Your family has loads of money on the influence. So she ignored it. I mean, she just was ignoring the guy. The following week, he still sent more flowers. And this time with a funny note. And it's so Kate, the thing prompted Kate to call him. And they ended up having this friendly banter over the phone. He wanted to go out with lunch with her. But she had to travel to Paris for fashion week. So she was preparing to go to because she had to style this and, you know, design her life. So Joe's response went like, awesome. I love Paris. Where are you staying? Maybe I'll show up and say hi. Come on, say money. That you can just pop up in Paris and say hi. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this is good. Three days later, Kate arrived in Paris and found out that Joe left an envelope for her with the lady at the front desk of the hotel she was staying at. Because after I talked about the hotel she was staying at, and I was like, oh, I know the hotel. And then he left something for her there with the lady at the desk. So in the envelope notes, you know, he, he was all really chill like, you know, the letter was cool and he also left his room number. So Kate convinced herself that this Joe's attitude, you know, his all chill, relaxed attitude was like, yeah, this guy is used to getting what he wants and I'm not going to be flattered by his efforts because for you to just, I mean, who does that? Like, what's his level of confidence, first of all? So she expected he had a backup plan that even if I never call him or check in, that obviously he's joking slave. There will be so many women that he can call up and have a good time with and stuff. So, but she she still called him and he was so delighted to hear from her. His response was so genuine and sincere. They ended up meeting at the hotel restaurant for a date. Joe was blown away when Kate showed up in this simple, elegant attire and he just showered her with compliments. In return, do you know what this girl told him? Your suit is nice. Savage. I love it. Because, and that suit was actually what she picked out. You know, when he came in for the appointment at the Weibo Swifts and he picked up a few items there, the suit was actually what she picked out for him. So for her to tell him your suit is nice, is also like a compliment herself to like, dude, I'm not complimenting you, yo. Your ego is already big enough. So that date was fun because they just talked, laughed, and Kate loved that Joe was playful and humble. On Joe's part, Kate was worth the chase because unlike many women who, went, who played hard to get but were boring, Kate wasn't. She was actually not that interested in him. And then she was interesting to be with. She spoke French and Spanish better than him. And he was the one with the access to tutors while she learned on the job. By the time he walked her to her room by the end of the evening, he was head over heels. Poor guy. <laughs> so Kate was busy for three days after that. And didn't see Joe, so he kept himself company by exploring Paris. He found a scarf he thought suited Kate's style and bought it for her. Every day, like every single day, this guy would slip sweet notes under Kate's door. On his last night in Paris, Kate decided to play along with his antics. Before she invited Joe to her room for company, she called the boyfriend, you know, the one that she's already that serious with, the soccer player, and she ended things amicably. Joe brought the scarf he bought for Kate, and she immediately recognized the designer's hems. 
it was a vintage from the 60s and she loved the pop of color it was a thoughtful gift that melted kate in sight because according to jay he was like i don't know your style yet but i noticed that you mostly wear brown black like you wear toned down colors but then your accessories pop like your lipstick is red and so just by observing her he had a sense of okay i think you'd like you know, this is a scarf, it's an accessory. So I didn't go for neutral. I went for something with a pop of color because I felt this is kind of like something that you would like based on what I've noticed about you. And that's like so good. Yeah. So they had a good time. Like they just talked and, you know, they ended up having the sweet kiss. Just, you know, kiss. So after Kate returned to New York, they quickly reconnected. And on her first day over at his house, they actually made love. She didn't see the point in waiting since it will still happen. She, she's a bad girl. She was just in for a good time because she just felt this whole Joe Kingsley thing had an expiration date. So let me just enjoy myself and, you know, when it ends, it ends. That kind of thing. She knew that backgrounds didn't match. She didn't expect the relationship to last long. So she just didn't feel any need to pretend and drag things out like the faster anything happens let it happen and let's know what we're doing that sort of thing so for two months our relationship consisted of hanging out in joe's apartment spending time together and making love so joe knew he was addicted to her like he knew oh my goodness i love cakes because maybe sometimes when they're together or something and you know maybe they just slept together or something and she wants to go he 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 mostly feels like can I just hold on to you longer? But in his past experiences, it was mostly like can this girl leave already? Maybe if there's another woman or something. And he just knew that I I like this woman. I I love this woman. I don't know what it is about her, but I just love her. And this was even before they ever had anything sleeping together that happened. So he, he just found himself like I I want more of this person. So at first, he was okay with them keeping things secret. You know that trail of, oh, I'm in a secret relationship. But after two months, the thing faded. Uncle wanted to, like, go out with someone, this woman he loved in public, to be seen with her. But she wanted to continue seeing him in secret. She didn't tell him why, but she did this because she was insecure and she thought that Joe's interest in her had an expiry date. If she crashed and burned, she didn't want the whole world to witness that. Smart girl. I mean... <laughs> This is like so the thing I would do. Like ah, even before the whole um social media thing on do not um trend thing happened, like people stopped posting boyfriends and girlfriends and just posted after they got married. Like I am the type that why would I post boyfriend? Am I crazy? <laughs> am I on weed? I don't understand. <laughs> we don't do that here at all. Like we're just chill, we're calm. Anything that happens, let it happen in secret, end in secret. Like what when I say secret, not like your friends don't know or something or your family perhaps, but there's no need to put it out there. And Joy is already a public figure. So she didn't want to this was even another reason she hesitated going out with him. You get and now that she was actually kind of going out with him she didn't want to put them there in the spotlight so that when it ends people will not keep hounding her like oh what happened she wanted everything to just happen in secret end in secret she can move on lick her wounds and that at least that was what she was expecting but obviously she didn't tell joe all this she was all like oh no no no, i don't really want to go out you know that kind of thing so the one time he convinced her to come to the movies she came after him and she left before the movie ended because she did not want paparazzi to accidentally snap them together. Do you understand? And because the paparazzi were always on Joe still. Like, it was unavoidable. And so, and this is like Joe's first time being with someone that he really wanted to be seen with. And she didn't want to be seen with him. So, poor guy was like, you know, in absolute pain. So, but one time, just one time, Kate now finally agreed to leave the apartment with him. And this was after the guy had bit and bit and bit. It was a popular restaurant in their neighborhood, in Joe's neighborhood. So it was packed. Like, it's, it's all these trendy places. Everybody there is trendy. So no one is really paying you attention. So they just settled in this back corner. So while they ate, Joe now um, said, now suggested that Kate should come to the Hamptons, you know, for a weekend to meet his friends and family. They didn't really finish the conversation. So they caught there. Then, but the following morning, like, Kate was on her way home from Joe's house. And then this paparazzi ambushed her. 
It's also unexpected. So can't just run. Like, oh my God. So she panicked, she ran. And then the media painted her to look like this slut that Joe hooked up with. So she called Joe when she got home and she told him about it. He was so sorry about it. And he gave her tips on how to handle paparazzi. Like, I actually found this part interesting. So we'll talk about it in the next episode. Like, tips on how you can handle paparazzi. You know, in case you're ever in that position, you never know. She had been so focused on trying to keep their relationship secret that she never learned to do. She never learned what to actually do in a situation where paparazzi was involved. So for days after this paparazzi ambush, Kate avoided Joe to avoid a repeat of the incident. With the cars out of the back, so Joe's cousins and Barry, they wanted to know more about Kate. He told her to, he told them she worked for Wilbo and, you know, Wilbo's name was recognizable. So at least she looked like she had some class. Yeah. So... And then Barry was like, mm, okay, that's nice. So why did she go to college? And Joe was like, that, 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 that's, a, that's an elitist question and stuff. So in general, Joe defended Kate. He spoke so highly of her. And it was clear to everyone how special. Okay, this person is actually special to Joe. He's not playing around here. And when his cousin asked him, so what about marriage? Is she actually someone you can marry? He was like, yeah. Like, I told this to myself, marrying this person. And that was like so cool. So um, now, obviously, novels like this, we know that challenges are going to come up. I mean, we're still going to enjoy how the relationship flow will go, to how the challenges that will come up, the twist and everything. And we're really going to see this in the next episode because I feel this episode has gone on for too long. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so in the next episode, we'll finish with a trivia. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.